He is risen. <laughs> I said he is risen. <laughs> Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Wow, wow, I'm already excited. The Lord beat us here this morning. Nancy and I were running a bit late. And uh, we've had a fabulous uh, camp uh, out there with our young people over the last few days. And the presence of the Holy Spirit's been amazing. Really, really amazing. Yeah. And uh, so this morning, you know what I want us to do is I want us to bring all of our attention to the Lord Jesus Christ, to our Heavenly Father, and to the Holy Spirit. I want you to really focus this morning, and we're going to worship Him. You know, this is Resurrection Sunday. This is the day when the veil was torn, the Lord rose up victorious over everything. And, um, you know, we really need to focus our attention on Him this morning, and we're going we're gonna to anoint Him with our worship. You know, we're going to magnify Him with our worship. We're going to glorify Him with our worship. No one else is going to have the attention, our attention this morning. It's just going to be Him. So, Heavenly Father, we so honour You. We so love You. We so welcome You, Father, the Creator of all the heavens and all the earth. And Lord, You made each and every one of us individually. You formed us. You chose us, Lord, to be here for Your divine purposes. And Father, we just love You. We I'm not afraid of you, Father. We just love running into your presence. We love your grace, your forgiveness, your mercy, your kindness, your goodness. Holy Spirit, we just honour you in this place this morning. And Holy Spirit, we love you. We welcome you. God on earth right now. God around us. God in us. And Holy Spirit, we give you liberty and we welcome you. And we ask Holy Spirit this morning that you would take over our prayers, take over our praise take over our preaching, take over this service and our lives this morning. And we pray all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, our Lord, our risen Saviour. And Jesus, we, we know, Lord, that um, this is the season, this is the time when we, we um, remember Easter. Uh, but Lord, Easter is every single day of our lives. <laughs> the death and the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, it's every single day of our life. We're forever grateful. We're daily grateful. We just thank you, Lord Jesus, and we honour you, the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ this morning. And we give you praise. You said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to myself, and we lift you up. Come on now, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Is there a shout in the house this morning? Hallelujah. Yay! Oh. As we enter your gates with thanks and your courts with praise We give thanks to you And praise your name Shout with joy to you, Lord All the earth be glad Cause we rejoice in you You're our strength As we enter As we enter your gates with thanksgiving And your courts with praise Praise your name. Shout with joy. Shout with joy to you, Lord. For the earth be glad. Cause we rejoice in you. You're our strength. Cause we're renewed. We're transformed. Your love brought us together. 
that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Pick me up, you turn me around, you place my feet on.
seen what you can do, oh God of wonders, your power has no end. The things you've done before in greater measure, you'll do again. There's no prison, oh, you can't break through. And you can move all oh, things are possible. There's no broken body you can raise, no soul that you can save. All oh, things are possible. The darkest night.
We worship you, we magnify. Magnify the Lord, the resurrected Lord. We lift you up in this place. We lift you up in our hearts. We give you glory. We give you glory. Our God is an awesome God. He's an awesome God. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns over all. He reigns over all. Oh, he's not dead. He's alive. And everybody who's in him is alive, is alive, is alive, is alive. <laughs> amen and amen. You may be seated. Hey, kids, man, you guys are awesome this morning. That worship, it just rocked me. You rocked my world. And uh, so we want to pray for you as you go out. And uh, no fighting, boys. Thank you. <laughs> I saw that uh, headbutt going on there. Oh, Father, we pray for our kids. We love them so much, Lord, and we know you love them. You handmade every, each and every one of them. Father, we ask that they would encounter the Holy Ghost. We ask that everyone would be born again by the power of your Spirit. We ask that you would anoint them to prophesy, to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. We ask, Lord, that you would anoint them, anoint them as evangelists. Let them reach out into their communities in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Praise God. I love those kids, man. Hey, we got um, next week on Sunday, there's a big kids outreach, KC. There might be a clip. Is there a clip for that one? I'm jumping around, though, not used to what I do. Oh, here we go. Harvest. Next Sunday is going to be radical, I tell you guys. Is it just a slide, not a clip? Okay. So um, what's happening next week is the kids and that are inviting their friends and their families, their parents and that. And um, next Sunday is going to be a big day because it's the end of our conference, last day of conference. And we're also um, at the end of the uh, session in the morning going to have a big baptism service. I heard last week there were already 19, at least 19 kids that had signed up to be baptised. And is there a few, give us a wave if there's a few here that you haven't been, you need to be baptised. Anybody out there? You're too scared. Oh, I see little hands going like that. Oh, there's some bigger hands, yeah. I think there's a lot of people that need, you know, you need to, you've received the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to go and be baptised, baptised in the Holy Ghost. But uh, that's awesome. But I'm going to have the ushers come and take up our tithes and offerings this morning. I still rate your enthusiasm about six out of 10. Like, I mean, Helm is 10 out of 10. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got to understand the principles of giving, the blessing of honouring the Lord with the first fruits of our income, and then the Lord honours us with His provision and His supply. Father, we thank You for the privilege of being able to give, to be able to sow, to be able to honour You in this way. We recognise it, that it opens the windows of heaven. Uh, we recognise, Lord, that You pour out blessings over our lives that we cannot contain. We can't even explain, Lord, the way You look after us. And we just thank You, Lord, for the privilege of being a part of what you're doing on the earth in your mighty name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, team. I think the number's up there if you need it, and the ushers will start. Usher. Hey, it's uh, what a fabulous day, and uh, I've got a few announcements, things to get through, so you need to pray for me because I'm not real good on this stuff. But uh, <laughs> uh, first of all, we want to welcome and honour Don and Julia. McDonnell, all the way from up there in the north. They've got a great church up there in the North Island and wonderful, mature ministry, Holy Spirit ministry. And we just love getting to know these guys and having fellowship with them. Uh, Julie is a bit cheeky, but, you know, we're working our way through that. But, um, but just, just fantastic and just so enjoying the fellowship that you can share with other Spirit-filled uh, people and ministry. And, of course, Jonathan Natasha here all the way from Rarotonga. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, uh, sent out from Celebration and doing a fabulous work over there in Rara. How many from Rarotonga? Give us a yell, Raros. <laughs> half of them are here. There's another half coming soon, I think. <laughs> but uh, welcome, you guys. It's absolutely fantastic. And uh, we have Bert and Tess all the way from Malolos, Philippines. 
And uh, at some stage, probably in the conference, we'll get Bert to give a testimony. And God's uh, done a miracle in his life, which has been fantastic. And I know the church here, we, we participated in seeing the hand of God work a miracle. And we'll, later on, we'll get them to share a little bit um, about that. It's absolutely fantastic. I heard that Jess McLeod was going to be in the house. Give me a, are you here? Give me a wave. God bless you. And uh, her and Norm minister up there in Gisborne, and we welcome you this morning. Great, great to have you here in the house. And, um, and all of the visitors, you know, if you're visiting and somebody's dragged you along this morning, uh, just make yourself at home, make yourself at your place, and, uh, and uh, it's really great. It's just great to have you here. So um, let me see what have we got here. Okay, the Impacting the Nations. I think there's a clip for that. Let's hit that. Lights, action, rolling. I just believe that the Lord's going to bring like a spirit of revival in the house. I really believe that there's going to be many, many souls saved. I believe God's going to shift us as a body and it's going to be a harvest centre. It's time to open up the gates because the harvest is going to come in. and God's going to bring harvest and revival. I think He wants a mighty outpouring of His Holy Ghost in our city. I think it's an overwhelming outpouring. It's coming, it's coming. I'll tell you, revival's coming. It's actually coming. God is coming again. Revival is coming. It's here. Hey, I think we have a, do we have a short clip from camp? Let's uh, throw that up. In 1992. This is uh, unedited, unabridged. I'm uncertain. That was a short clip. <laughs> oh, that doesn't even tell, a, uh, you know, 5% of it, really. And uh, praise God for the wobbly camera work. I, uh, <laughs> that was awesome. But um, you really had to be there to experience just the outpouring and the power of the Holy Spirit. And uh, um, it was actually quite over, overwhelming. I got home last night and maybe about 10 or after 10 o'clock, I, I couldn't sleep. I remember looking at the clock, it was 3.18 in the morning, and I was still just, uh, you know, I was still just alive in the Holy Spirit and everything that God was doing, and I just felt His presence. You know, I woke up, um, I woke up late this morning. Usually I say every week I woke up early this morning, but I didn't get up until about 20 past seven. That's really late for me. And, and I went and, you know, went into my office and sat there and, um, yeah, I just, I just felt the, uh, the wonderful presence of the Lord. I just felt, you know, in my heart today, I just felt so grateful for everything, for everything God's done, everything He's doing, everything He's going to do. I felt so thankful. I felt the Lord spoke to me. Um, Don had shared in the Scripture last night that we should love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and our neighbor as ourselves. And, of course, 
evangelism is all about the, is the love for our neighbor. But I felt the Lord spoke to me this morning. This is a little bit for, you know, young people, the younger ones that are looking for life partners and things like that, that goes on. And this just the way the Lord spoke to me. And there's, there's two loves that you need, that, are, that, that there's two loves that you, and I want to use the word need. It's a need, a need. And one is to know the love of the Father, to know the love of God. And every, every, um, every one of his creation on the face of the earth needs to understand and know the love of God, that God loves you, that God chose you, that God made you, that God has a divine purpose for you. And um, our response to that is, is that we love him with all our heart, mind, soul and strength. Then the other, the second need, <clears throat> I believe, is that we understand that we, because of God's love in our life, we need to love ourselves. And, uh, and um, not, a, not a selfish love, but, and I say need, because often um, people, you know, looking for life partners and that, they are needy and they're looking for love. They want someone to love them. They want to dedicate their lives and love them. But I want to tell you that a husband and a wife or a partner can never satisfy that need for love. And sometimes we reach out to other people or allow other people into our lives because we have that need we have that insecurity we have that need for love we haven't we haven't fully laid hold of the love of god or or god's goodness and love for our souls where we feel confident within ourselves and um and so we reach out out of need but the people we reach out to can never meet the need our, you know the need can never be met with humanity and a lot of people end up in very poor marriage relationships or relationships even outside of marriage because they have this burning need to be loved. So I want to encourage you, you know, I believe that the Lord wants us to fall in love with Him and understand and know the love of God, first of all, in our lives. And then we should be able to stand in the place where we love ourselves, because if you don't get that, you will never love others. See, the third love, the third love is the love for other people. And if you enter a marriage or a relationship or even out there with people that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you go out there, with the love of God that's been shared abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost. It's a totally different dynamic. It's a totally different dynamic. And um, I want every single young person in marriage age or looking about those, so I want you to be able to stand and say, I know the love of God. I know God loves me. I love myself and I respect who I am in God. I have this love of God. I don't need a man. I don't need a woman. I don't need any. There's no other love you need. No other love you need. Now you might say, I want, that's fine. You don't need. So when you're entering into a relationship, it should be in, it, the relationship be based on the giving of love. And evangelism is all about giving of love, the love of God, sharing the message of God with people that they might find His love and His salvation. And uh, yeah, so that was what was on my heart this morning. I, you know, I talked to you in the church because I believe in daily bread. You know, when God led them out in the wilderness and that, he, he fed them every day fresh bread. You don't want an old sermon. Uh, you want daily bread. You want, what's the Holy Spirit saying today? So there's people here this morning needed to hear that. And um, anyway, so baptism after the service next week, get your name down at the information desk and everything. It's an important step in your relationship with God. Moving on, remember Casey Harvest. Um, I just got to mention a couple of other things too, like, all of the people and the working bees that have been going on for several months around this place, dozens and dozens of people, you know, cleaning up the campsite, building the buildings, the, the ablution blocks at the back. And, you know, we just threw in the middle of all of the other stuff you had to do, another building over there, our kids' church building, KC700. We're believing for 700 kids. We've got a building that can fit them. So we're believing for 700 kids and 1,400 parents. And... Um, and I noticed I did sneak in a couple of days ago, had a look in that, the, the, big, um, the big room on the other side, it looks like it still needs one top coat on one half of it, because next Sunday we want to use that for the outreach. And then um, the toilets, the, um, the concrete's been poured in there, and, uh, and we need a few guys, we want to just throw up a few petitions, put some dunnies in, so the kids, the kids can go over there for their ministry, and then they can go when they're over there. <coughs> So um, there's no time, but you'll find time. You've been just fabulous. And I want to really, I just want to thank everybody too that has worked so incredibly hard uh, for the 412 
um, Jesus is Coming Again conference. It's fabulous, but um, actually, uh, people don't know Nancy kind of works. She does an incredible amount of work behind the scenes. And um, I know she's worked tirelessly pulling teams together and meeting with ushers teams and administrative teams and organising all the details. It's, it's immense. I haven't spoken to Nancy. She hasn't spoken to me in two months now. But I love, I know that Nancy, Na a lot of Nancy, it's con time is consumed with the ministry of the Lord. And I love that. I love that about her. I love that she just gets in there and does the job. And, but then there's um, John and Lee just put so much into it. We so appreciate you guys. You're doing a great job. All of the team, you know, Ra and Hitta and um, uh, Abraham and Leish. And I, I, won't, I can't mention everybody. There's so many of you guys and all the ushers out there. Man, the, um, the catering team was awesome. Rachel led the catering team. And each time I went out there, there was a whole different um, a gang of uh, volunteers out there, ladies from the church and that all in there preparing lunches and preparing food. Abs absolutely fabulous stuff, you guys. Uh, the cleaning teams, um, I did hear a little testimony that after one of the sessions, one of our guys was actually vacuuming the floor and the Holy Ghost hit one of our friends and they just started weeping when they saw the service and that heart. Beautiful, beautiful, you know, you guys. And that service, uh, the audio, the video, the working t working bees have been going on out for, for months. We've been cleaning up and working, getting it ready. You've been doing that. And uh, all of those teams and uh, just fabulous, the worship, the video, um, that's not the final video, we know that. Um, pray Lord to help the video team. And then, uh, you know, all of the speakers and the people that are giving up their time and their ministries to come and minister to us. And we, we're very humbled, we're very grateful for all of that. So God bless all you guys. We thank you so much for all your work everything you're doing. Let me see if I've got everything written down. Oh, hallelujah. I think I've covered most of the bases. All right. When we were singing, I love that song, um, that last one we were singing, and I've got this real problem. Uh, not a problem, but a problem. When, they, when we sing that, play, that song, because this is the day. The veil is torn. This is the day. This is the day we recognise the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We know this is the day that the veil is torn, the doors swing wide. I see glory. I see glory as I run inside this throne room and before you I bow. And I can't help when I'm singing that. I just want to do all the actions, you know. I'm doing the running in. I'm tearing the veil. I'm opening the doors, you know. I'm right in there, I'm right in there. And then, and then I'm tripping people to get into the glory before other people get in. And, I'm, and then, I, then I think the door, there it is, it's all open. It's, it's, everything's available, all the heavenly realms available. And we run, we run inside and then we, we strike the glory. And then we bow. Then we fall. Remember, and I'm handing over to Don and I, now. But um, otherwise I'll start preaching and that'll be terrible. But I just keep... I hate it when I go to a church and the other guy preaches before I preach. <laughs> but I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> Resurrection, the veil is torn, the doors swing wide and the glory. And then, um, and then that, there's that, uh, you know, when they went to the tomb in the morning, uh, all of the non-Christians, they met up with the angel who had rolled the stone away. And they, all the non-Christians fell down as if dead. But there was some woman there and the angel just spoke to them and said, hey, get back into town and tell the boys. You hearing that, girls? Get back into town, tell your husbands he's risen. He's risen. Anyway. It's such a privilege to have uh, Brother Don and uh, Julia with us, and we really honour and love them. And uh, let's put our hands together and go for it, Don. Sorry about the preaching, mate. <laughs> Absolutely outstanding. What a privilege to be in the house this morning. You're fired up. He is risen. 
Thank you, Pastor Murray. Believe it or not, I love it when the guy just preaches a message. I can chill out for the day, all right? And, uh, and that's what we sort of look forward to. Anyway, it's great to be in your house today. What a privilege and an honour for Julia, my beautiful wife. Stand up and do a twirl. No, she's not going to do that. Uh, it's, it's, it's great to be travelling with my wife. We, we've just been married 50 years. 50 years. Yeah, yeah. Um, somebody said to me the other day, how do you do that? And uh, a lot of people do ask, how the heck do you do that? And my simple answer is, we were born in a time when something's broken, you fix it, you didn't throw it away. It's a shame we live in this day. We live in a throwaway age and we throw way too much away. We don't fix stuff. We don't even know how to fix stuff any longer, actually. And uh, get some fixing skills about you. Learn them out from the Bible. Get some principles in your life. And uh, you can, of course, um, a house is only a house. It's not a castle until the king and queen do love each other. And that does make a difference, all right? So there's some real principles that I believe that this book here can teach us to live long, happy, married lives and successful lives as well. Amen? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so it's good to have you traveling with me, baby. And uh, exciting, exciting to be hanging out with Pastor Murray and Nancy. Nancy. Love you guys. Um, like I said last time I was here, I can't believe we didn't meet a lot earlier in life. So I think we're like kind of the same spirit, you know? And uh, love the Holy Ghost. Uh, love revival and just a little bit wild with it. Okay? And use words that you're probably not meant to use in church <laughs> when you're talking about fixing things up. And, uh, but what an honour to be here today. And uh, I really do honour you guys. What a great church. Man, you guys don't, you know, we get, if you're not careful, you get uh, ho hum with your own church. I reckon invite the whole Christchurch here. This is a pumped environment. You can, when you walk in here, you can tell Jesus rose from the dead. Some churches you walk in, you're not sure whether he did or not. But here, Jesus rose from the dead. And there's an excitement and there's a vibe and there's a Holy Ghost atmosphere. And, uh, and we need to be very aware of that. And I think sometimes, you know, I would say sometimes I don't think we're excited enough about what God can do in a house like this, you know. There are miracles here today, don't know whether you can feel. I'm, I'm sitting there this morning uh, in the middle of that singing thinking, man, there's some miracle. People are going to get healed here this morning. If you need a miracle, there's miracles in this house this morning. I, I, I felt there's some real miracles of revelation here this morning. I, I believe God's going to open up people's eyes this morning. I, I believe you're going to see stuff you haven't been able to see for a long time. And not only that, blind eyes, man. God's a healer of your eyes, okay? And so... There's a lot of exciting stuff happening here. There's freedom in this house. That's what it's called, of course. But there is freedom here. There's freedom in this place, I want to tell you. And so Jesus set us free when he rose from the dead so we can live in victory even in the middle of our circumstances. And if you're not careful, your circumstances will over, overrule, overrun. And you can start, if you're not careful, you start living depressed. I find it very hard to live depressed. Uh, I just get it, all I have to think of is 14 years ago, I couldn't even get, I couldn't move anything from here down. I was totally a quadriplegic, and uh, God stepped into my world and healed me. Yeah. It's vi and, and believe it or not, you forget that. I think some of you may have forgotten your salvation, yeah. <laughs> or you'd be more excited about the praise and worship. Yeah. I, I think it's amazing what we forget. Yeah. Some days I'm walking along and I'm just taking it all for granted and living my world. And then suddenly it just triggers in my mind. Can you remember 14 years ago, you couldn't even feel anything from here down, nothing activated? And, yeah. it, it's a th and it makes you grateful. Yeah. We need to live far more grateful than we are, I think. Yeah. I mean, man, if, if you're here today, if you woke up this morning without a white chalk line around you, you should be the most grateful person <laughs> on the planet. And uh, I think... Let's, let's learn to celebrate the goodness of God. And it don't really matter what age you are, man. I'm, I'm, wherever you, people are, it don't matter what age you are, people are getting taken out. We need to know we're trusting Jesus. Yeah. We're trusting the Word of God. Yeah. And this book 
is, I mean, it's called the Bible, B-I-B-L-E, Basic Instruction Before Leaving Earth. If you're visiting today, this is the thing you need. If you've never been in church before, you're in the right place at the right time. Uh, this is a day, I'm, I'm just a visitor here today, but already I'm entangled in the environment of faith that's here, and there's hope in this house, okay? And it's not just because it's Easter, by the way, it's we live Easter, you know, we serve a God that's not dead. He, you can't lock him down. You can't box him in. Jesus is alive. Religion, religion, by the way, will always box Jesus in. Religion. There's a lot of religion in churches in New Zealand, a lot of religious churches, if you haven't noticed. And uh, if you've been to one, that's probably why you're here today. Uh, but there's a lot of religious churches that have boxed God in, you know, and it's rules, regulations. It's sort of stiff and boring and unexciting. But you come into a place where the ends are kicked out of the tomb and there's an excitement here, right? And you can feel. And that's why I say there are miracles. You, and don't matter who's preaching. I don't think it matter who's preaching. I think we've got, we've got um, screwed up with we like this preacher or that preacher. Uh, I think let's just let the Holy Ghost get a hold of our lives in yeah. Jesus' name. And uh, then we'll have more revival, more miracles. Because if you're waiting for me to lay hands on you, already missed it. Holy Ghost is walking around here right now yeah. thinking, man, I just want to heal somebody who's got that anticipation and that excitement and that expectation. Yes. I think we fail to live in expectation. Expectation of a miracle. We come together. It says when God's people are together, when two or three are gathered in the place, there my, my what does it say actually? Two or three are gathered together. Here I am. He's in the midst of it, okay? And, and it also says where the brethren dwell together in unity, then there's a bit of oil flowing. And I, we had the oil flowing last night, guys, didn't we? The, where, where are the uh, youth campers? The youth camp. What an honour and a privilege to speak at your youth and young adults camp. Um, what was it called again? Come, Jesus. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming, okay? And... Uh, what a privilege it was, and I reckon that in several of the sessions, Jesus turned up. Yeah. I mean, that video clip, yeah. I mean, God bless the video clip, but, <laughs> but I was on the floor for a good two hours yeah. when the presence of God came down like a cloud. Yeah. In fact, some of you that are over the age of whatever age we were meant to be that we were there... <laughs> You need to get to the next youth and young adults. I mean, what disqualifies you? I'd like to know. I turned up. I'm 70. We've been married 50 years. Got, yeah, married at 20, was it? Something like that. And, uh, but, you know, we disqualify ourselves. And I want to say, get hungry for God and don't let anything stop you. Don't let any barriers get in the way. And let's go and be regenerated, rejuvenated. Man, Jesus is alive. And uh, yeah, drop, kick that retirement word out of your life and come alive in the Holy Ghost and do something for the kingdom that will change lives, you know. And uh, I think every one of us has got that opportunity. It, it don't matter who you are, you can change lives. And uh, goodness me, I was in the supermarket the other day, just went in to get a few goods. Um, things I like, and uh, I was just wondering, uh, only a couple of things, it was like, I can't remember even what I got now, it would be lollies or something yeah. like that, you know, some rubbish, it would be junk food, all right, oh, chips, <laughs> bags of chips, that's what it was, and, uh, and anyway, there was only about, I think I got four or five bags of chips, and I was coming around, and uh, it pays to be observant in life, you know, we need to look around, you know, it's like half the time we're preaching and we're answering questions nobody's asking, and I pray today that maybe I'll answer a question or two that's on your heart, or God, I need a miracle, God, I need healing, God, I need a breakthrough in my life, God, my life is so boring, I want to get up and go, yeah. maybe, but I, I wandered past and there was this, an elderly, well, I called them elderly, I'm supposed to be elderly, I think, but <laughs> an older couple were having an argument, and obviously struggling to purchase what they were meant to get. And, um, and anyway, he wanted some stuff. She was telling him we can't afford it. And if you listen up to some of these conversations, uh, there's some people doing it tough and, uh, in our world right now. And that's why we need this more than ever. That's right. And uh, anyway, I thought, I felt God prompt me 
to do something about it. We can do something. Man, I'll tell you what, always have a youthful spirit that looks for opportunity to do something about it. I don't think people care what you say until they feel how much you care. I, I think there's some huge notes in there. And uh, I think, and anyway, so I sort of followed them around a bit, you know, being nosy and following them around. And they were picking a few little things, putting some things back. He, was to, he wanted stuff. She was saying, no, you can't have that. And they picked a little wee packet out. And um, I went, and when they got to the till, the, the checkout thing, sorry, I thought I'll push in in front of them. So I was at the back, and I thought I'll just push in in front of them. Because I didn't need a trolley. They had a trolley. I had just a basket thing. And so I just pushed in in front of them. And, of course, that upsets people. In fact, I pushed in. I waited until I purposely let there be a bit of a line. And then I just walked right past the whole lot and just pushed in in front of this old couple <laughs> and put my stuff down in front of theirs. They were already loading it on. And I put my stuff, and then I pulled one of those things out and put it, and no, you push yours back there. And uh, I could, even the, even the teller was looking at me like, you disgusting <laughs> individual. And... Uh, and uh, and, you, and, and they were marginalised in life because they probably already resigned to retirement and retired their thinking and their action and their spark. So they didn't say anything. They looked at me like I was some kind of a dog. But, <laughs> and anyway, the girl, she, with a snarl on her face, she put all my stuff through. And uh, then I said, no, no, you haven't finished yet. And I pushed their stuff through with it. And uh, then she, all of it goes through, their stuff goes through as well. And uh, they were sort of surprised, what the heck's going on? And then I just paid for the whole lot and grabbed my little bit and I started walking away. And next thing, this couple come after me and they're crying. And uh, they're crying because someone's done a good deed. for. I reckon you and I can wake up this world and breathe transformation into people's lives. I reckon there are millions of opportunities. I mean, heck, um, the, my Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So you and I don't live bound by these uh, economical words like recession and that. We don't live in that. We, we live bigger than that, you know? And I think it's very easy to get yourself trapped in that. And I want to encourage you as a church, let's live big. Let's dream big. Let's, let's arrive at church expecting a row of cars that you can't get yourself in here. Man, we need, to get, we need to believe for our seat to be stolen on a Sunday morning. We need to be, I can't no longer get on the front row. In fact, not enough of you on the front row. Look, I can't believe some of the front rows are, are non-populated. We've got to spark it up, guys. I'm here today to inspire you to live a better life than you're living right now. I'm here today. I believe the title of my message, I haven't come up with a title until now, but I believe my title today is let's remove the limitations off our life and live bigger than we've ever lived before. Because Jesus rose from the dead so we can live bigger lives. And somehow we've got to stretch ourselves a little bit and get over some stuff and leave some stuff behind. I mean, the Bible is full of incredible promises that would tell us, do not live defeated, but live in victory. Yeah. And I think we have got to start living in the victory that God won for us on Calvary. Are you with me today? Yeah. Or are we just thinking about it? Because I think sometimes, listen to this. It says, in Psalm 46 and verse 10, God is our refuge and our strength, our ever-present ever present help in times of trouble. He is the one constant in your world. And I believe we need to hang on to that. It's Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, which I already quoted, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Man, we haven't got a worry in the world, guys. Jesus is the same. The same God that walked up to Lazarus' tomb and said, been in there long enough, come on out, buddy. The same God is right here today in this house about to remove stones out of the way of your life and say, come on, step out of your depression, step out of your lack, step out of that mindfulness that would cause you to be discouraged and down and let's rise up and conquer in Jesus' name. That's who we are. We're the church. We are the church. We're the, mo we're the most happening organisation on the planet. Oh, don't get excited then. We are the most happening organisation on the planet. I mean, get out of your own world a little bit and you'll find out that we are, you know. 
and, and people lay their lives down. You and I are here today celebrating in this beautiful building with an incredible crowd of awesome people simply because someone went before us and laid down their life. And Jesus, number one, but thousands out through history have laid down their life. So you and I can worship freely in this house. We can declare, we can speak in tongues, we can declare and have miracles and see the wonders that God wants to do in our midst. And I think we need to rise up in that and have faith in that. Um, Hebrews 12, 28, I love this. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken. Hello? Like you look around the world right now, it, it's a tough, it is tough out there. There's some difficult stuff going on. And you can understand why some people can easy, be if you're watching TV, for example, God help you. If you, if you watch the news on TV, you're probably discouraged today because that would be the most discouraging thing I've ever looked at. That's why we kick our TV out the door, smash it to pieces on the front lawn, let the neighbours watch it, light a fire on top of it, <laughs> burn the thing up. But I think the, the world is consistently battering you. I read an article the other day, and they were saying that this is the toughest time for New Zealanders. And they were saying that uh, right now, you know, the price of fuel... You know, it's huge price of food, interest rates, everything going up. It's crazy out there. And they were saying, they've, the, there's, you know how you used to drop a piece of food on the floor and you had a three-second rule? They're saying because of the recession, the three-second rule is stretched out to 20 seconds now and you can still pick it up. <laughs> You've got to look for the positive in everything, don't you? And... Uh, <laughs> And so we've got to get, you've got to, honestly, you have got to stir up and encourage yourself. David encouraged himself in the Lord, okay? I am an encourager of myself. When no one else has encouraged you, stir yourself up. Get into the presence of God. There's nothing like the secret place. I think we've lost the art of finding the secret place in our life. And we need to find the secret place because in the secret place we can build ourselves up and you come out of that place on fire for God, ready to change the world and believing that what Christ did for me, he wants to do for the entire nation of New Zealand and beyond. And we need to wind ourselves up with that and we need to lift our faith a little bit and believe that there was a, we think we got it tough. There are people that had a lot tougher than us. Let's rise up and let's run this race that is set before us, realizing that they're on the grandstand of heaven right now, cheering you on. They're cheering us on. I hope they're not discouraged about us. I hope they're not thinking, look at those weaklings. Look at them backing down. Let's rise up and run in the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. And I'll tell you, and that happens, that ha it, this is an altar, okay? I'm walking on, an this is quite a small altar. I was in an altar in, in, um, in kind of in Bogota recently. In Bogota, the altar held Eight and a half thousand people. Wow. The altar. Why? Because people need to get on the altar. Yeah. You know, I, I spent a couple of hours in the weekend just on the carpet, just semi-conscious under the power of the Holy Ghost. And man, in fact, there's a conference coming. I'm looking forward to conference. Yeah. We can <clears throat> just get under the presence of God for an hour or two. Yeah. Some of you need to <clears throat> find yourself onto the altar. In fact, if you, haven't, if you haven't been to the altar in the last two weeks, you need to get to the altar. That's kind of how I live my life. Yeah. Because the altar, well, you all know it. If you're married, you know it. That's why they have an altar at a marriage, because she gets you to walk down the altar and the aisle, the aisle alter you. It's all that stuff. <laughs> and, uh, and, but an altar... An altar will alter you. And uh, we need to know how to present ourselves before God and say, God, I need, I need transformation. I need you to fire me up again. God, I want a fresh anointing for this week. Last week's manna won't do. I want a fresh manna this week. The, the manna that came from heaven didn't last even one night. Some of you are still dwelling on last year's manna. Let's get under the power of God and let something happen that's a little bit radical and shifts us beyond this barrier. I think my God is a barrier-breaking God, and I think we get way too comfortable. I think, honestly, we get comfortable. We're chilled out. 
God's in the house. There are miracles here. And we're relaxing in our seats, believing that someone's going to preach enough inspiration to wind us up. Well, God's here and his presence can absolutely electrify your life and cause you to walk out of here with power. We're talking power. I mean, in Pentecost, there was power that came down, nuclear power. I mean, they split the atom and there was a bit of a boom there. Jesus' body was split on Calvary and the, the boom is still affecting society today. When Jesus' body was split on Calvary, you talk about an atom explosion. We are living in the dynamo power of the Holy Ghost in the last days. And we're going to rise up like an army out of the sea. And we're going to take back what the devil stole in Jesus' name. Whether it be your health, whether it be your neighborhood, whether it be your family, whether it be your husband, whether it be your wife, whether it be your prodigal child. But we're taking it back in Jesus' name. Because Jesus won the victory for that. And we've got to believe this stuff. And I think we've got to wind up into it like never before in Jesus' name. I'm fired up. If you can't already tell, I'm fired up, all right? Because I believe we're living in pretty radical days. And I think we've got to grab a hold of the opportunity while it's before us, okay? And uh, so, I, I, yeah, I just encourage you in that. So I, I just really feel some people are out of orbit. You know, I, I like to keep my orbit close to God. I think we orbit around God, and I think there are people here today, something popped you out of orbit, and you're out there by yourself, and God's saying, I want you to come right back into the middle of the orbit that I've got for you. I want you to come in close again. God wants you close to Him. You need a miracle? There are miracles here this morning. Not because I'm here, there are miracles because Jesus rose from the dead, and He's here today. He said, we're two or three gather. The Holy Spirit's here, man. The Holy Spirit's here to unlock a miracle for you, and I would encourage you right now, grab it, reach into heaven. In fact, grab it wherever you are. I was in a meeting a little while ago preaching about um, God's presence turning up and miracles happening. And, you know, the, the woman with the issue of blood, um, the Bible says she said to herself, I don't know what you're saying to yourself this morning, uh, whatever you're saying, um, maybe it should be, if only I can touch the anointing that's in this place today. If only, and, and you can touch it. You can touch it right where you are. Yeah. But I think sometimes this woman, she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, then she repositioned herself. Yeah. I think we get so comfortable in our comfortable seats that we just sit. But I believe the Holy Ghost would have us to reposition ourselves. Moses had to reposition. He didn't just see the burning bush. He had to shift over. He had to come close to it. God said, get your... Get your Nike's off or whatever, you're standing on holy ground. And it was then that God spoke to him. And I think we are void of the voice of God in our lives because we haven't deviated from our boredom and stepped out of our way and repositioned ourselves in God and said, God, I need to hear your voice. I need a fresh voice of God every day in my life. I can't live on yesterday's manner. I want more of what God's done today. Let, let's lift the lid off some things in our world and let's see God do miracles in every realm of our society. And, and I think even the woman, she said to herself, I can just touch. And she pushed through. And you've got to push through some barriers, yep. all kinds of barriers. I mean, I, I tell you, I've been around church long enough now to know that there are barriers that stop people from sitting on the front row, from getting to the altar. You know, you're worried about what people think about you. The, the head goes crazy. The enemy just loves to stop us from being in the presence of God where the miracle power is. And so I would say, let's remove every, let's push through those limitations today. Let's push through them. Come on, Celebration yeah. Center. Let's push through them. So, so um, I think we started off, I was just thanking some people. So thank you. Thank you to the camp people who management, managed the camp and made it happen. You're beautiful people. I love you. Okay. And uh, I consider it a privilege having been at your camp. An absolute honor, actually, having been at your camp. Julia and I just loved it. Here we go, okay? I want to read you a scripture, and then we're going to get into it. In Luke chapter 5, and verse 17, sorry. Luke chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Now it happened. Everybody yell out, now it happened. Now it happened. On a certain day, as Jesus was preaching. Man, I tell you, Jesus is preaching here. Now, he would have to be the top preacher on the planet, right? I mean, he, he said of John the Baptist, he said actually John Baptist, he, Jesus said John the Baptist is the best preacher. 
And remember this, he only had three sermons. Repent, get saved, get baptized. Then back to number one. Repent, get saved. Tomorrow, same, same three. Morning, and, and we always have to have something different. But John the Baptist only preached three messages, and Jesus said he's the best preacher of all time. So Jesus is preaching here, and it says there were Pharisees, teachers of the law, in other words, religious people sitting by who had come out of every town in Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power. I want to dwell there for a second. The power of the Lord was present to heal them. I believe there's an anointing in the house this morning. Even as we celebrate Easter, the resurrected Christ, as we come here today, believing right now that your life can never be the same again because God's here, okay? And I believe right now. And the interesting thing about the story is that there's one man who's not in the house and he's a, he's a quadriplegic like me. He was, he was like me, couldn't move a thing. And he's out there laying there somewhere. And he had these, he, re, he connected with four friends, okay? Four friends. They must have been friends because anybody you allow to drop you through a roof on a few ropes is probably someone you trust because they, they couldn't get in the house. I love it that they couldn't get in. But these four guys, they're not in church. They're outside of church, but they knew there was hope on the inside of the church. Okay. And I want to tell you right now, there's miracles on the inside of here this morning. And we've got to get that in our faith and in our DNA that we want people to come and bring the broken, bring the lonely, bring the lost. We're going to restore you and put you back together and get this country back on track in Jesus' name. That's how it'll happen, a revival that hits New Zealand. We need a revival. Now, they couldn't get in, so they go up on the roof, remove a few tiles. Oh, you'd love to see that happen, wouldn't you? Like, like, like just the radicalness of that. I love the radical edge of faith. I love it when people do something that's a little bit outside of the comfort zone, a little bit outside. Then it seems that God turns up. And Jesus saw them, and they lowered him down right in front of him. And Jesus says, your sins are forgiven you. Oh, you got to love that. All the religious people are like, what the heck? He hasn't said this in his prayer yet. And, uh, but Jesus said, your sins are forgiven you. Rise up and take up your bed and you're walking out of here. And I want to tell you right now, there are miracles in this house and we need someone. And I want to tell you right now, there's enough faith in this room to remove the lid. Now, all they did, they removed the top, okay? Some of you got the top screwed on too tight and God wants to remove the lid this morning and release you into a place of radicalness, a place of dance and a place of joy in the Holy Ghost. And I believe it's here this morning. And I believe there's an anointing. And we're coming into a conference. And I really believe, I'll tell you right now, I believe, in fact, a lot of people are waiting for conference. You know, yeah, conference is going to be on where? Well, it starts right here for me. In fact, it started at the youth camp for me. It started there for me. I am not good at waiting. I want everything now, okay? So I say, let's not have it, let's, why not, sorry, have it right now that the presence of God floods this place and upsets, tips a few things over and gets people radical under the Holy Ghost. Because I believe right now there are miracles in this place. I feel about 100 miracles on the inside of me this morning just as I'm walking around up here. I feel the power of God. And I know that as you prayed in the beginning of the meeting and you ushered the Holy Spirit into this place, I felt, man, the power of God just hit the place. Just hit the place. And, and I'll tell you what, the level, the heat in this place went up about here. And I thought, man, people are going to get healed in this meeting this morning because God's turned up. There's faith in the house. There's resurrection power in the house. Like, like the, the, the stone's gone, man. The stone's been rolled away. Your negativity, your doubt, your fear is rolled away this morning. Let's get rid of it. Let's put unforgiveness there. Any unforgiveness you've held on to this morning, whoever you're not forgiving that you should be forgiving, let's roll that stone away. Because if you allow that to come back over the entrance to your life, you will be trapped in that tomb and you'll die your own death on the inside of there, a spiritual death because we refuse to forgive. But God says, forgive and you will be forgiven. And then you get radical healed in Jesus' name. We've had to walk through that pathway of forgiveness. We've had to walk the path of radical faith. We've had to understand that faith that cannot be tested cannot be trusted. So yeah, God will test your faith. Yeah, sometimes it is hard, but I'd sooner go through the test and come out the other side on fire. I'd sooner be like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego and get thrown in a fiery furnace and have God hop in there with you and disturb the nation a bit, upset them, rattle the apple cart a bit 
than just be boring and bow down with everybody else. We've got to get radical about this power that's within us. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. Like I said before, if, if, if they split one atom and it changes the world, when they split the body of Jesus on that cross, I was just thinking about this morning, man, when they split his body, broke him to pieces on that cross, it released an atomic charge throughout all history. And I'll tell you what, something about an atomic blast, you can't even live there for, for hundreds of years after the thing's gone off. You better believe it's, it's impregnated every fabric of society right down through history, right down into 2020 more. And that's why we're living in this realm right now, that we're believing God can do more in our time than he ever did before, because the atomic surge of God's energy is coming out of everything around us and we just need to unlock it we need to lift the lid off it and release souls into the kingdom and release a revival into our lives and God wants to do that God wants to do it and I love the fact that these four guys remo removed the lid just four ordinary people so a lot of people are looking you know we need somebody to spare we need a specialist in the gospel no you don't you just need you on the altar fired up and under the power of the Holy Ghost that's all we need. And then our society changes, our world changes, our schools change. Every dynamic in our world changes when you and I catch fire with the Holy Ghost. We light it up. In fact, let's be fire starters. Let's just, I'm, I'm a bit of a fire bug anyway. I love starting fires. When I was a young guy, I could burn everything I saw. I just loved seeing fires started. When I got born again, some preacher said to me one day, you're going to be a fire starter for the kingdom of God. And I thought, Good news, let's go. <laughs> I've been doing it ever since, all over the world. Yeah. These four guys, I believe they were fire starters. Yeah. I believe they were guys, you know, they weren't in church, they weren't in the meeting, but man, they were fired up. Yeah. They went out looking for an opportunity. Looking, I'm going to encourage you today, church, let's be people who look for opportunities. I don't care where you are, in the supermarket, on your street, in the school, where we, let's look for opportunities and let's unlock some faith in people's lives. Yeah. Not that hard. People are hungry for this stuff. People want what you've got. Yeah. Believe you me, they want what you've got because people have got nothing. They're depressed. They don't know who they are. They're under the circumstances. You're above them. And we can, we, we can deliver the sweetest sound to our world that they've ever heard. I want to tell you, it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's Jesus is your answer. And, and it's still the same today. Never change. So there's some keys that I believe unlock you today. And uh, because there are things that I believe we need to lift the lid off so that God can do it, okay? Yeah. So number one, there are people here today with identity barriers. You don't believe you are who Christ said you are. Yeah. You're an overcomer. You're more than a conqueror. Yeah. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in your world. That's who the Bible says that you are. Right. Yet we live limited lives with a lid on top that says we can't overcome we can't push through, and we don't know who we are. Well, I want to tell you who you are today. You are a blood-brought son of the living God. You're a blood-brought daughter of the living God. You are more than an overcomer. You have power in you to change your circumstances and turn your world around. And God is for you, not against you. And we need to know that today, and we need to overcome it. Emotional barriers. One of the things that holds us back is our emotional barriers because our past has stuck with us. Well, let's cut the past off yeah. on an altar like this and say, past, you have no more opportunity in my life. I'm living my life for a brand new tomorrow. And we need to start a new tomorrow. Jesus rose from the dead so we would never, ever have to go back. He paid the price for it. He cancelled it. And you and I can live in the victory of our tomorrow. And I believe that's all over this meeting today. And I want to encourage you right now. Let's remove the lid off our sin, off our discouragement. Let's remove the lid off our doubt and our fear. And let's rise up and believe for miracles in the house in Jesus' name. There's people here today that need homes. There's people here today that need houses. There's people here today that need babies. There's people here today that need uh, miracles with their, their physical body. And I want to tell you right now, the lid is lifted. Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you right now for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that's in this meeting. I thank you for faith that has risen and stirred in our spirits and in our bones this morning. 
And God, right now, I thank you for the greatest miracle of all time, that you died on that cross for our sins, that three days later, as we celebrate today, you rose from the dead victorious. And God, you are living today. And right now, Father, we thank you for the grace, for the love, for the mercy that caused us to be able to be forgiven. And all we have to do is reach out and say, Jesus, here I am. And I'm going to ask you right now, right across this place, well, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Maybe you're here today and you haven't given your life to Christ. Maybe you've, you've been shackled by shame or intimidation or who you are. Well, I want to tell you right now, God is here today to release you, to cancel all shame, to cancel every fear. God is here today to set you free. And I want to tell you, all you've got to do is say, God, here's the keys to my heart right now. God, I'm giving you the keys to my heart. I want to be born again. I want to be set free today. And I'm just going to ask, right across this vast auditorium right now, whoever you are, friend, if that's you and you say, Don, I need to make that kind of decision. I need to let Jesus have the keys to my heart. I need to get born again today. Why don't you very quickly just lift your hand right now and give me a wave, wherever you are. And they say, yeah, God bless you, man. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you right down the back there. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Right down the middle here. Thank you, thank you, right over here. Thank you very much. Come on, just anybody else right now, right now. If God's speaking to your heart, this would be the greatest opportunity. When I was 20, God bless you, right over that side there. God bless you, I love you. God bless you, great decision. Anybody else right now, God's speaking to your heart. You might be backslidden. God bless you, sir. You might be away from God right now. You might have allowed intimidation to pull you away from God and you've got out of orbit today. God bless you, sir. I meet thousands of men today who have got spun out of orbit and God is bringing you back, friends. God is saying, I want men back in the kingdom of God. The man has been out of his place for too long. For too long, men have been out of their place. The man out of his place causes the woman to be displaced. The children misplaced. And God ultimately replaced. And God is doing a revival call across New Zealand right now. It's like, men, I need you in the kingdom today. And God is saying, why don't you come and surrender your life and humble yourself and bow down and get rid of the pride and say yes to Jesus. And he'll change your whole world. He'll put your marriage back together, put your life back together, put your finances back together together. Is there anybody else that needs to say yes to Jesus this morning? Just real quick, sir, over there. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else right now? God bless you, sir. Anybody else? Well, heads are bowed and eyes are closed. If God's speaking to you right now, there'd be great. God bless you, ma'am. God bless you. That's an awesome decision. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I see that hand right down the back there. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for every hand that's been lifted today. God, it's not just a show of hands. God, these are people's hearts. God, some of them are broken. Some of them are desperate. God, there are people here today that are desperate. And I feel right now, I just feel that. I feel the compassion of God going out to some of you. They've lifted your hand, and you're at the end, you're at the end of the road, and you're like, man, surely this time, surely this is it. Well, I want to tell you right now, there is a God of promise here today who promises you that he will unlock you from your past, that he will cancel the sin that has entangled you in a lost future. And God says, I will cut that off and give you a brand new start. This is about a brand new start. It happened for me when I was 25. I stood on an altar like this and God turned everything around in my world. And I want to tell you right now, I walked out of there feeling like I was 15 feet tall and freer than I'd ever been. Freer than you could ever be, friend. God is setting people free this morning. I'm going to ask you right now, if you lifted your hand or you knew you should have, even there are people here right now who should have lifted their hands. But something held you back. Well, I break every chain that the devil would put on your mind and on your spirit this morning, and I set you free to make the greatest decisions in life in Jesus' name. I'm going to ask everybody to lift their hand just to stand to their feet right now. Would you stand to your feet just right across this place? If you lifted your hand, stand to your feet right now. And I'm going to invite you to leave your seats and come down here and join me. Is that okay? Just come on down. I want to shake your hands. I want to congratulate you. Come on down. Bring your friend with you. If you've got a friend with you, bring them down with you.
in a while you guys stop clapping. Heaven's still rejoicing. Yeah, yeah. Because I'll tell you now, the day I stepped forward on an altar like this, there was a crowd in church who were cheering me on, or I may never have made it out of my seat that day. But I felt encouraged by God's people who seemed excited about the fact that my life was about to turn around. We've got to stay in the realm of excitement. There are miracles that happen on altars like this. Miracles. I believe there's a dad up here today, and I want to tell you right now, Dad, get ready. God's about to unlock you from the shame of the past, and God's about to set you free to lead in a way you've never led before and to be a dad who can lead hope in Jesus' name. We need more of that in this nation, friend. I'm believing for it. Before I pray for these people, I'm just going to give one more opportunity if there's anybody else and you're sitting there and you're like, man, I know I should be there, but I'm not there. I'm going to invite one more time and give you one more opportunity to come. One more opportunity. Just now while it's nice and quiet. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, sir. I'm proud of you, man. Proud of you. This is what church is about. We support one another. We go, I'm never, ever embarrassed about extending an altar. Never in my life. I extended. One day I gave the mic back to the pastor. I went and sat down in my seat and God said, there's a guy here who's going to die if you don't get him today. So I jumped up and I said to the pastor, sorry, I need the mic back. And he looked at me like, man, it's been a long altar call already. And, uh, but anyway, we gave the, I, gave, I said, listen, God just gave me a picture of a blade of grass that shoots up in the day and the sun burns it off and it dies off at night. And uh, I said, that's the picture I just got of somebody's life. There's been people praying for you. It's time you got your life right. Yeah, and, and it was a guy. I said, man, there's been people interceding for you that you would get your life right with God. And I said, today's your opportunity. Anyway, this guy jumped up right down the back and came down, bawling his eyes out, 40 years old, young man, 40 years old, came to the altar. He said, it's me, it's me. I knew they'd been praying for me. They invited me to this meeting and I would not get out of my seat. We prayed for him. The power of God came on him. He was forgiven. He went home that night. He just walked in his door at home, had a massive heart attack and went straight to heaven. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying that to scare anybody. I'm just saying that. I'm just saying that as the importance of an altar call like this, where we get our lives right with God. You can't, you've got no guarantees of tomorrow. We can only guarantee this moment we're in right now. And I want to tell you, let's grab a hold of it and make the most of it. Lives are being changed right here. People who have popped out on the altar, even just since we started this altar. And I want to tell you right now, I'm believing for the power of God to come on you today. I'm believing for sin to be cancelled. I'm believing for the strong man to be dealt with in your life. And God release a hum humble and a heart of humility that will receive the grace and the love of God today. Let's pray. In fact, why don't we all stand right now and you stretch your hand toward these guys. Holy Spirit, I thank you right now for every... I, I particularly feel for the men this morning. I partic I've got to tell you, I feel that it's time that men got in their place. And I believe there are men out here. If you're not here right now, you probably need to get here. If you have a wife who's on fire for God and you are not, get yourself out of that laid back seat of religiosity and get out here and stand on this altar and say, I'm going to make a choice and I'm going to lead the way. I'm not going to be a follower any longer. If that's you, I just... Just feel a, a bit of an urgency on that. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you right now.
Don't see anybody moving. So, Father, I thank you for every man on this altar. I pray for miracles in their life. I thank you for the women that are here. I thank you for the children that are here today, God. Little children that are saying yes to Jesus. Father, I thank you for them right now. And I thank you for the miracle of salvation. Right now, I take authority over every demonic lie. I take authority over the, the, the power of sin over your life that has destroyed you. And I cancel its effect right now as you stand on this altar. And I say it will not have any longer any authority in your life. And I invite you right now to pray this prayer with me, that you receive Christ, that you be forgiven, and that you start afresh in Jesus' name. So let's pray. Say, And we can all join in, the whole church. Say, Jesus, I thank you for your amazing love that you gave your life on Calvary for my sin. We celebrate today that you rose from the dead. And right now, I sense your presence. I feel your love. And today I receive your forgiveness. Jesus, I honor you today as my Savior. And right now, I renounce sin out of my life. I turn my back on my past. And I step into the love of God today. In Jesus' mighty name, I am born again. I'm a new creation. And I will live in that victory. From this moment on, I step into faith. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Give him a huge hand clap. I just got to... I just got to pray for the little girl. Can I pray for you, honey? Gorgeous little girl up here on the altar. I think Jesus said, suffer the little children to come on me, and I just love seeing her here. How old are you, honey? You're only four years old, you little sweetie. Man. What's your name? Dobby? Sylvie Rose Dobby. You're cute as, man. God, I thank you for this little girl. I, I declare over her life right now. Lord, she stands on this altar. Boy, no doubt something triggered her heart to be here today. God, I believe it was your presence. And I pray right now, God, let her have an evangelist anointing rest on her at even four years old. Let her stir up a kindergarten. Get ready for your whole kindergarten to come alive. In Jesus' name. Lord, we, we, we declare over this family, over this home, over this little girl, over a mom. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you for the miracle that's happened on this altar today. Never the same again. You two are together. Holy God, husband and wife. Heading that way. God, I thank you right now for the miracle that's happening here today. Sir, I want to say you're up here by divine appointment today. God's putting his hand on you right now. In fact, I sense the Spirit of God comes on you and says, you're not ordinary, you are extraordinary. I planned you, purposed you, called you by name. In fact, you've had an encounter with God and God says, I'm about to radically stir up that fire within you and you're going to stand up and you're going to lead the way. Get ready for miracles to happen in your guys' lives. I declare it right now in Jesus' name. Lord, right over this altar, I thank you for every man who stands here today. God, I declare miracles in your life, sir. I thank you. I just want to lay hands very quick. In fact, I want to shake your hand, every one of you, and I want to uh, impart an anointing on your life that causes you to live on fire and catch the flames that I've got on my life and live radically for Jesus right now in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. I prophesy over you that this is a brand new day and a new beginning in Jesus' name. I tell you what, I'm praying for people here and I'm feeling, look out for your family. God's about to use you and your family. Families are going to get radically turned around. I see this going generationally. I see kids being radically transformed. Holy Ghost, thank you for the miracle on this brother. Thank you for the miracle right here, God, as men stand before you today and make a commitment to you. I put fire in your belly today in Jesus' name.
Thank you, God. Thank you for this brother. God, I thank you for his heart. I thank you today, God, that you arrest the heart of men and you cause a turnaround to happen in their lives in Jesus' name. Father, on my brother right here, God, I thank you for him. I thank you, brother, you need a miracle in your life. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's a miracle here for you. It's greater than salvation. It's greater than repentance. But God says there's a health miracle right here on this altar for you today. And I just lay hands on your head right now and I speak a miracle over your physical body. And in Jesus' name, you will rejoice in the Lord your God. Here he comes right now. Power goes right through you. Lord, this young man standing on the end, I pray for him right now. I thank you for his decision today. I thank you, Lord God, that you would wake him up. Lord, that you would cause him to know the responsibility of his life and the leadership of the Holy Ghost in his world. And Lord, Lord he would run and not grow weary. Lord, that he would rise above the circumstances and go for God in Jesus' name. There's a whole heap of people around you, man, that need Jesus. I want to tell you right now, Holy Ghost. Boy, this is exciting. God, let a revival start right here. You're right in the middle, let a revival start. Speak a revival of your life right now. It's going to affect, I tell you right now, you're standing here, but there's a whole, gener there's a whole family line. Get ready. Yeah. What God, you're a key that's going to unlock some things, man. There's a responsibility on you. See it on your life right there. Thank you for this beautiful young woman. Thank you for the power of God on her right now. Thank you for the anointing, Lord God. Thank you for, oh, Jesus, I thank you for this woman right here. Power of God goes through you. I want to tell you, set free. Uh, in fact, I tell you what, intimidation's cancelled over your world right now. Uh, in fact, emotional brokenness is it's been a barrier over your life forever gone in Jesus name and God says you're healed today Lord on this brother here right now I thank you boy there's so many people I'm going to take forever to get across this brother Holy Ghost sir take a step forward from where you are right now that's great you're stepping into a brand new territory today God said I am cancelling the past fear is gone Shame has gone. And God said, this is a brand new start. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Boy. 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 You're a miracle and God's about to unlock incredible, incredible atmosphere around your life. And this is church, guys. Thank you, God, for a miracle right here. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Never the same again. Never the same again, honey. I'll tell you what. Stuff's letting you go even right now as you stand here, man. Chains are falling off. We sung about that this morning, but chains just falling off. Thank you, God, for these miracles right here. Miracles. I declare it over your life that this is turnaround time. I declare it over your life right now. I activate the power of God in your world today. Activate faith in your world in Jesus' name. You're not going to walk in the natural realm any longer. You're going to walk by faith in the power of Jesus' name in your life. God, on these young men here, God, I put power on you right now. I break and I cancel the effects of sin. I cancel the effects of yesterday. Even stuff when you're growing up, I cancel it off your life. And God says, I'm setting you free today in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, your miracles happen right here. On these young men, I stir you up and I call you. I position you. I call you into the kingdom of God in a place where God will occupy every thought, every mindset. And I'll oh, tell you what, I, I even reckon, funny thing, I'm praying for you. God's saying, tell them to get ready to be a missionary. Man, in Jesus' name, God, I thank you for this miracle right here. Thank you, God. Thank you. Brother, receive it right now. Grace of God's all over you today. The grace of God. Forgiven. Forgiven. There's another little girl who wanted to get up here today. Thank you, God, for this. Little boy, sorry. Little boy. Heck, mate. Lucky you're still small. You'd smack me down. What's your name, buddy? Terafity. Man, God bless this little guy. God, I thank you for his life now. I thank you, Lord. How long have you had that name for, Terafity? Well, that's an awesome name. How long have you had that name for? Four years? Five years? Four. That'll do, buddy. God, let a miracle happen on his life today. Father, we declare over this young guy, Lord, that he would be a radical for you. God, I know, I'll tell you right now, are you the mum? No, wherever the mum is, uh, God bless your mum. 
But I believe God had, God had an incredible plan on this boy when he's in the womb, okay? And he's up here today because God's about to stir a radical faith in him and he's catching it off me and he's getting ready to be an evangelist in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I already prayed for you, but thank you for it all. Thank you, God, right now. I prophesy a miracle over you and I declare today a breakthrough in your mind. Stuff's troubled your mind, man, for too long. God's busted the ceiling off it today. In fact, I crack it open right now and I remove that ceiling that's limited you in Jesus' name. Oh boy, faith goes through you, sister, faith in Jesus' name. This man, you came out right at the end. Holy Ghost, I thank you right now for the power of God on him. And I thank you for a total turnaround in Jesus' name. And you're going to walk and not faint. You're going to run and not grow weary. You're going to get a hold of this stuff. And I'm going to put what's on me gets in your spirit today and lights you up in Jesus' name. You will not be ashamed of the gospel because the power of God's lighting you up. Holy Ghost, I thank you for this wonderful woman right now. Thank you for the power of God right through every fibre of your being right now. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, we declare. Spirit, sorry, pushing through here now. God, let a miracle happen here right now. Miracle, miracle. This is a salvation miracle. Young man right here. God, I pray right now, let the fire of God be ignited in his spirit. Here, take it, man. You're standing on this altar today. God's already done a miracle, a miracle right here. And with this little girl, Lord, a miracle right there on this dad and his daughter in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost on this beautiful young woman right now. Just lift your hands toward heaven, up a little higher. About there is good. I'll tell you why, because you just busted through the ceiling. There's been a ceiling over your mind, over your imagination. Gone in Jesus' name. Gone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for this radical miracle today. You're a miracle. You're a generational miracle. You're a miracle of God's grace and mercy. God is saying, my hand is not short that it cannot save. And God says, get ready what I'm about to reach out and do. Father, I thank you right now for this miracle right here. Man alive, the power of God's on you guys. The power of God's on you, sir. In Jesus' name, who have I missed? Holy Ghost, put a touch of heaven on them. Touch of heaven, touch of heaven. You didn't just get saved today. It's breakthrough in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God. Come on, give these guys a huge hand clap. They're on the arm. Sorry. Now, I've no doubt someone's going to look after all these people. Well, what happens? Yes, I do. Hey, God, come on, give them, oh boy. If you can't move, that's okay. Now it's Sunday morning, Resurrection Sunday. There are miracles in this house. I, I, I'm feeling miracles, like I'm feeling like God's about to unlock back injuries and God's about to heal you. Somebody here with a kidney disease and a blood infection. I tell you what, there are miracles just all over. I'm, I'm not gonna come pray for you individually. I'm gonna invite everybody who needs a miracle, come out the front. Power of God's here right now. We're gonna stand on this altar. In fact, there are people right now that need to lift the lid. The lid of disease and infirmity broken over your world. The lid, see, I find this. I need to say this. I have found in my life that when we begin to talk about activating the miraculous, that God turns up on it. That God makes an appointment with man when he cries out to God, God turns up. So I want you to come expectant today. I want you to come believing. I want you to stand on this altar. Whether I touch you, pray for you, means zippity doo da. God will touch your life. God will touch your spirit today. God will break off the spirit of infirmity off your life and cancel the diseases that the enemy has brought against you. And I'm believing right now, right across this house, God, we believe today that you are a miracle working God. Father, that you came to set the captives free. The Word declares to us that you died for our sicknesses and our diseases. God, that they were cancelled. You sent your Word, Jesus Christ, to heal our infirmity, to bust the curse of disease off our lives. And in Jesus' mighty name today, I declare over you. Now here it is. Here comes the anointing right now. Anointing of the Holy Ghost just flowing all over this place right now. 
whatever you're standing here for today, whatever is represented on your cry to God today, I want you to grab it out of heaven right now because the anointing is flowing all over this room. In Jesus' mighty name, Jesus' mighty name, Jesus' mighty name. Here it is right now. Just receive, receive. God doing a miracle right now. Someone's spine. Someone, I, I see a blood disorder right now. Blood disorder. I see God beginning to adjust the very function of your DNA. I speak to your central nervous system now, calling it into line with God's Word. That heart disease, I smash it right now in Jesus' name. I smash it. That liver, that liver disease right now that has put a curse on your life. Even the words that have been spoken over your life, they're busted today in Jesus' name. I cancel the words of sickness that have been prophesied over your life. And I declare in place of that, that you will be healed in Jesus' name. I declare right now that your liver would be made new in Jesus' name, that your kidneys will be in to function in normality right now in Jesus' name. I speak to those spinal injuries that are here. Someone with a hip disorder right now, great pain in your hip right now, right now, even as you stand here. In fact, who is that with a, with a pain in their hip right now? I believe God's about to heal right over here in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. The two of you right here. Holy Ghost, a miracle happening right now in Jesus' name. I break infirmity and in Jesus' name right now, release a miracle right through. There it goes. Power of God just flows right through your spirit right now. In fact, I destroy every word that's been spoken, words that have come as a curse on your life. They are gone today. And in Jesus' name, I speak restored body, restored bones, restored joints. And in Jesus' name right now, let the pain get off her in Jesus' name. What's happening? Well, we'll see when I go for a run. <laughs> yeah, well, we will see. What's it like right now? You don't know yet? Feels, yes, I don't know yet. Feeling good now. Thank you, Jesus. Give Jesus the glory. Wow. Hallelujah. You did have your hand up, right? Yeah. And you. They're all in one bunch. Yeah. I've got spine problem here, but... Come on, it's going, it's going, it's going in Jesus' name. It's going in Jesus' mighty name right now. Pain, get off her. Get off her and release this woman in Jesus' name. I speak wholeness. I speak to your central nervous system. Right now I stir up. We disrupt the present to increase your victory in the future right now. Get off her in Jesus' name. Spirit of infirmity, in the name of Jesus right now, I declare that, that those hips, that spine be totally restored in Jesus' name. Free health care, guys. Holy Ghost. Right now, the miracle just happened. Sister, grab it, grab it, grab it out of heaven right now. Sister, right here, the power of God's all over you right now. In fact, boy, you're receiving right now. You're receiving a miracle. Somebody here today, and you've got eye issues with your eyes. There's been a report about your eyes. I want to tell you, that's getting healed right now in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Man, there's miracles. Miracle. In fact, God just cancelled. God just said it's cancelled. The curse is cancelled, sister. Cancelled and it's gone. It won't affect your mind or your spirit any longer. Now, now, I, I just believe God's saying to you, turn around and everything leaves in Jesus' name. The curse of the enemy leaves. Just turn right around and look at me again. There it goes, honey. God says I'm set you free right there. Starts there, right through every fiber of your being in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost. But this woman here, I want to tell you, the curse is broken. The curse is broken in Jesus' name. And Jesus came to set you free today. Here's what we, it'll take me all day. And somebody probably got a chook burning in the oven. So here's what we're going to do. I want you to, I was going to say, put your hand wherever you need a miracle. Be a little discreet with that, but put your hand wherever you need a miracle right now. And we're going to believe right now that the power of God floods through because you are a blood brought son and daughter of the living God. I speak most of my miracles over my own body, over my own body. I declare you get up in the morning. I speak to my body and I say, you are healed in Jesus' name. One of the symptoms of my quadriplegic paralysis tries to come back and I speak to it and I say, get off. 
you demonic lie. I am healed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I will walk and not faint. I will run and not grow weary. Now, people right over this place right now, I speak to it in Jesus' name. I speak to your infirmity. I speak to your condition. And in Jesus' mighty name right now, we release the power of the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Now over those eyes, over that mind, over somebody here with a brain, there's a brain disorder right now, a miracle happening right there, right now. Those people with those eyes in Jesus' name. Man, here's a miracle for you right there. Pain just goes in Jesus' name right there. Right there. Right there. Sister right here. Boy, just an awesome presence of God right here. There it went right through you. Right through you. The power of God. Just let it saturate you. Saturate you. Sir, I release a miracle over you right now. I break, I break every curse. I break every lie of the enemy. Holy Ghost on our eyes right now. I declare a miracle in Jesus' name. Been suffering from migraines. I want to tell you it's over in Jesus' name. It's over in Jesus' name. It's over. It's over. Holy Ghost. Sir, right there. Man alive. Holy Ghost, I thank you for this man of faith. I thank you for his heart of faith. And right now, Lord, from the top of his head, I declare and activate the miraculous on your life right now. Pain gets off you in Jesus' name. And right now, healing flood right through him in Jesus' name. Whoo. Power of God's all over this altar right now. Grab your miracle. Some of you right now, here's what's going to happen. Because... In sickness, often, you know how it says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Sometimes we just need the joy of the Lord. Right now, over this entire altar, I cancel every lie of Satan. I pull intensity out of your spirit right now. And I release the joy of the Lord is your strength in Jesus' name. I release it on your life right now. The joy of the Lord. I release the joy of the Lord. Holy Ghost power, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Start to rejoice in it right now. Start to rejoice. God's about to release you through joy. God's about to give you hope through joy. God bless you, sir. Go for it. This sister right here. Joy of the Lord's going to be your strength. Cancel today in Jesus' name. Cancel today in Jesus' name. You're going to walk into this. In the next three weeks, God says, watch what I will do. God says, watch what I will do. Mark it on your calendar. And God says, I'm going to turn your circumstances around because I am the God who loves you. I am the God who died for you. And I'm the God who won the victory for you. Now, Lord, fill her up with the joy of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give Jesus one more massive hand clap across this place. He's worthy. He's worthy of it. Awesome. Praise God. Awesome, isn't it? So exciting. Praise God. And um, I just believe that there's miracles and healings and yes. salvations and souls and lives changed. And hey, um, uh, Don's going to be here too for a big part of the conference. He's going to be ministering probably, I think it's on Wednesday. And John Alley's coming over from Australia and his wife, and uh, they're going to be here ministering. Seth Fawcett is going to be here during the week. These are all Holy Spirit ministries. Wild. They all believe in healing and miracles and souls and salvations. And um, there's still plenty of room at conference. If you want to come along, we're going to start on Wednesday morning and uh, two sessions each morning. And then uh, at night, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, finishing Sunday with a big harvest outreach with the kids and a baptism service. But I think we should, um, there's a song that's been resonating in my heart a lot lately and it's Come Jesus and I think we should acknowledge and recognise Him and let's begin to sing that, let's just push in and uh, let's worship, let's celebrate Easter by worshipping our Lord Jesus Christ and you know it's the second coming, He's coming again, He's coming again and uh, about two years ago the Lord spoke to me very clearly in prayer and He said I'm coming again to revisit every person and every place where there's been a visitation of God. And um, I, I know that's a word of the Lord. So if you've encountered the Lord in your past at any time or been in a revival or a move of God, I can tell you today with God's authority, He's coming back to revisit, to re-encounter you and your family and those churches that have had those visitations of God. He's coming. So let's come on, crank it up you guys. Don't be slow, get it in there. Come on, push in now. Sometimes I fall to my 
knees and pray. Come, Jesus, come. Let today be the day. you, Lord. Amen, amen, and amen. Hey, um, uh, while we're still here, I don't want anybody to leave to stay, but you might want to go and sit down. But, um, you know, we need to take up a love offering for Don and Julia and their ministry. Yeah, give the Lord a blessing for that. <laughs> and um, 
You know, this is really an important part um, of any service and everything is honouring the ministry that God sends in our midst, recognising them and then sowing into them. And uh, there's a blessing that comes when we bless others. There's a blessing that comes to us. And um, I'm just going to pray and the ushers are going to come. I know people are going back and kids, you can sit across the front. And I don't know if the kids church, have they loosed you yet? Hey, over conference, I want, can you guys do that sword dance? You know, that one, is that raise hallelujah, is it? Is that, yeah, raise a hallelujah. We got to have that sword dance. Hey, I, I'm just really looking forward to that. What do you reckon? Sound good? All right. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the ministry that you've brought to us. We thank you, Lord, for their love for you, their love for us, their love for the body, their love for our nation. Father, we just want to bless and sow into their ministry today. Father, we thank you for a privilege of partnering with them in what they're doing for you, the advancement of the gospel. So, Father, I just ask that as we give, you'd release a blessing, more than monetary blessing, but you'd release a great blessing over them, over their family, over their children, their grandchildren, over their church, over their church leadership, over their ministry, over their future ministry, over their physicality, Lord. And Father, I just thank you for that blessing right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Yeah, give the Lord a hand. and You got that number up there. We're going to do that. We, we, I said, oh, we've got to have a last song. Do you, don't you love worship? Man, I just love worship, you know. And uh, you get into the presence of God. Sometimes you just come in and people just start, when you guys just start worshipping, it's like it, the God just inhabits it. You know, He inhabits the praises of His people. He just comes down. And uh, man, I love that. I love, I love, I love, I'm just waiting. I'm talking while the ushers are ushering out there. And, and do you need wheelbarrows, guys? You need, uh, well, uh, but... um. You know, I love, I love the presence of God. You know, one of the things for me that's really important in my own personal life is I found the Lord in the middle of, in the middle of an LSD trip. And um, I don't think I ever would have really found the Lord or continued to walk with God all of these years if I didn't have a supernatural encounter. I, I, needed, to, I needed God to reveal Himself to me. I needed to know He was real. And I, I went to that service. Nancy had got, found the Lord a few weeks before and I went along to a service and stoned out of my face because I was frightened of what might happen if I went along. And there was only a little church, about 24 people in there, and the whole message was for sinners. And I looked around, I realised I was the only one. I was the only sinner in the whole church sitting there. And uh, the preacher said at the end, he said, if you don't believe that God is real, ask God to prove himself to you. And uh, on the outside, you know, I was, I'd been in the gangs, I was in drugs, I was in all that sort of stuff. I was all dressed in black and black heart. Black coat, even they wore black underpants. Black socks, black under, you name it. It was black everywhere, and I had a really black heart. But I, inside of me, you know, I was really searching, and I, so I prayed that prayer. I said, God, if you're really real, I, I want to know you. I really, I really want to know you. And nothing happened. <laughs> for like for three weeks, and I got, I got so angry, you know, and I remember saying to Nancy, where is this God of yours? <laughs> And then it was Easter Friday for me. See, this is my birthday, around about midnight on Easter Friday. And, and that's important because that's, that's when he was being crucified. That's when the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ was dripping down on the earth for the remission of sins, the forgiveness of sins. His mercy was being poured out and it was being poured out for me. Good, good Friday night. And in the middle of an LSD trip, the Lord just came into the room and I just knew it was God. I've been stoned for so long, I'm slapping my arms and that, thinking, what's happened to me? I'm suddenly sober. So, um, because I'd, oh, anyway, I won't go into all of that, but I want to tell you, I want to tell you, but God changed my life. And, and the thing that happened, I got up the next morning and God just started speaking to me. He's been talking to me ever since. That, see, it was all about relationship. Once I was, once I was born again, I, I came into a relationship. And uh, man, I always laugh at my mum because I was trying to 
convince people I'd become a Christian. And because I was so rotten, nobody would believe me. I was ringing, I was even ringing Christians and saying, I'm a Christian. I'd be coming and they going, oh yeah, oh yeah, sure you. And I rang mum and I said, mum, I've become a Christian. She said, oh, that's all right, dear. It's just another fad. You'll get over it. 49 years later, I still haven't got over it. You know what I mean? It's getting better and better and better all the time. Oh, man. Don't you just love the Lord? But that, that experience with God, that anchors everything for me. Like when I go to the Word, you know, I love the Word. I love the Word. I love the Word. But that experience, then I know the Word is true because of that encounter I had with Him. So we go, let's uh, sing and we're going to lift our voices and lift our hearts to the Lord. And I, I often in worship, just my own personal testimony a little bit, in worship I often uh, think of that woman with the alabaster jar. And when I'm worshipping the Lord, you know, I run into His presence and I smash that jar of ointment and I pour it out all over the Lord, that extravagant worship, you know. And uh, I don't know how, how people can worship without waggling their tails and lifting their hands and moving their bodies and visualising Jesus and en encountering Him, you know, with every part. I love it when the dancers dance. I love it when the dancers dance and express that before the Lord. So let's dance of... of Oh, uh, show mercy and stop talking. Let's stand, let's worship, let's anoint the Lord. Let's break those alabaster jars right now. Come find your place, church. Hey! I 
Hey, the, the girls, the girls have asked for the veil song and we can't deny our kids who want to keep worshipping. So let's do the veil song. <laughs> Saints and the elders, glory song in 
Be blessed, church. <laughs> <laughs>